this is a test to just see if we can heat up a half inch nut using uh, 36 volts 13 amperes battery voltage 36.2 thermocouple I don't know how well that's going to do in here but it's uh, in Celsius 67 degrees uh, let's see start my little timer here I'm going to try to read the frequency here Uh, 470 C the thing is glowing drop to uh, I forgot what I said the current was initially but it's down to about 11 amps now we are uh, a little over a minute into the test still 36 volts 580 Celsius and let me see my scope is set on two microseconds per division and one complete cycle happens in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, divisions so that's in 16 microseconds I can take the reciprocal of that later but I think that's going to come out about 60 kilohertz uh, one thing that's new is that I've added an extra whole bank of capacitors here from a failed uh, one of my early failures <clears throat> and so I'm, I'm down from 113 kilohertz down to about 60 kilohertz just a tiny hair over 10 amps now I'll turn out the fluorescent lights take a look it's uh, medium orange to me it's white in there Now I'll turn on an incandescent lamp. Whoa, something's smoking. I gotta turn things off. Well, that's as far as I got. Uh, a wire connection to my second set of capacitors was starting to cook here. Capacitors are are a little warm. Yeah. But uh, the post is really, really hot, so it's a bad connection there. That one's a, a bad it, it is a not a good connection either. Interesting. So I have been using, I did use, uh, well this is probably, what, 14 gauge wire to hook up here. I'm going to restart the test. I just connected the extra bank of capacitors, so I suspect we'll be up at about 100 kilocycles again. Uh, 36 volts, cooling is still on, uh, battery 37 <coughs> volts with no load, going 36 volts going to turn things back on here and uh, only 8 amps of current that's interesting so we actually got some more current flow with the extra capacitors I'll have to deal with uh, how to uh, make better connections there and try this again <clears throat> but I do want to give it a shot We're now 50 seconds into the test. 412 still rising fairly rapidly. Down to 8 uh, amperes, 36.2 volts. I'll turn the incandescent light off here. I really don't see any glowing now, well, maybe just barely in my naked eye. Turn the fluorescent light off. 
I see a low orange color. Okay, you can see what you see there. Incandescent light. Away, incandescent light off. Fluorescent lights back on. One complete cycle. One, two, three, four, five. Five and three quarters divisions. For one complete cycle. Five and three quarters divisions. Current eight. 606 degrees. 610. I'm not sure how well this thermo this uh, particular thermocouple is doing here. You know, as far as getting the actual reading. The board at uh, this what it's about seven and a half amps now is nice and cool. Capacitors are just a couple, uh, maybe 80 degrees. Heat sinks are maybe 80 degrees. Looks like to me like there's significantly less heating of the part. Uh, without those extra capacitors. So I guess I'm going to kind of say that the uh, that the uh, lower frequency did do something for the heating. It certainly did increase the uh, amperage. However, now that I think about it, I didn't check the uh, idling amperage with the added capacitors because I think that'll actually increase the idle current so maybe my net current really hasn't changed that much yeah we're not getting much beyond 626 there okay so I'll just turn the power off and see what the idling current is the idling current is like an amp and a half on it's just a bit over eight so it's about six and a half amps at 36 volts Now we've been a fat three minutes into the thing. And I see a medium orange glow. And you see what you see in the camera. Okay. And 627C, that's about all we're going to get. So, I think I'll end this test. Oh, water got up to 91 degrees from 66, which is pretty typical.